everyone, Simon and Alex here with Top Tennis Training, and in this video, we're gonna show you how to deal with those heavy topspin shots in tennis. Now, we all struggle with those deep balls that bounce aggressively, so we're gonna show you five ways to deal with them. Now, before we get any deeper into the lesson, if you're serious about improving your game, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel, but you also turn on that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know whenever we release a new lesson. Now, dealing with a moon ball is just one of the ways to win a tennis match. If you wanna find more ways, all you have to do is download our free PDF guide. Click on the link beneath this video that will take you to our website, enter your email address, and we'll send you that free guide right away. Now, the worst thing you can do when dealing with a high topspin moon ball is catching it at its highest point where it's above your head and you're unable to do anything with that ball. This often happens when you're too close to the baseline. So your positioning is too close to the baseline and you don't give yourself space by either moving back or going forward to make sure that you catch the ball in your hitting zone, which is between your hip level and your shoulder level. So anything above that now becomes a little bit more difficult to deal with. And the higher it goes, the tougher it is to hit the shot into the court. Now, often when we see that higher moon ball, it can travel slower due to the spin that was put on the ball. This can be deceiving as when I watch that ball, I want to move to the ball to attack it. But what we forget about is that the ball actually contains a lot of spin. It has a lot of spin put on it. So once it bounces, it's gonna shoot up at you. So if you've positioned yourself too close to the ball and that happens, you're gonna end up late on the ball and it will often miss hit that ball. The first way to deal with this high ball is to move back. And that should be your go-to play if you're just starting to learn the move. You're gonna buy yourself a little bit more time Therefore, you're gonna be able to hit the shot a lot easier. You're gonna allow the ball to come up, and as you move back, you're gonna let it come down to be within your hitting zone. As we said, the worst thing to do is to hit the ball over your head. So we're letting that ball come down. And in the meantime, I have enough time to prepare and hit my shot normally. Now guys, make sure you stick around to the end of the video where we'll reveal two drills which you should be doing with your coach or your training partner. So here, recognizing that the ball might be going a little bit deeper, and even if it's looking like it's a little bit slower, I'm still gonna buy myself some time by quickly turning. So I'm making my uneven split step, I'm gonna turn. And I will either sidestep, or I may even use a crossover step to give myself even more time. Now from here, if the ball's coming down, I can now use my back leg to either do a hop, or a turn, a jump step, either one of them will work, but at least I've given myself the time to let the ball come down and hit the shot. Now if I've gone too far and I realize that the ball is now a little bit easier, I can always make up space and go forward. It's a lot easier to move forward to the ball rather than hit the shot while moving back. So if I've made the space and then I have to move into it and hit it properly, that's okay. So don't feel like just because you've moved back, you now have to stay there. You're always looking and always adjusting. You want to be as light and as sharp with your feet as possible to, to make sure that just because the ball is a little bit higher and slower, you don't start moving slow with your feet. That's the time to get even more explosive. Now when you move back, you have to accept that you have to play a defensive shot. This is because you're now further behind the baseline, you don't have as much angle available to you, you're further away from your opponent, therefore the ball is gonna take longer to reach them, and because you have to cover a lot more distance with your shot, you now have to give more height to the ball and going cross court is a good idea. If you go cross court, you don't have to recover quite as much and you can actually cover most of the court. If you go down a line, you risk of being attacked cross court. What you're looking for is to hit that moon ball back and see if you can put the play back on them and see if they can deal with that shot. So make sure you're going for that nice height you're going for depth and you're mostly going cross court or down the middle at least uh, so that your opponent can't attack you and expose the angles on the court. Now the second option you have in dealing with these high topspin shots is to move forward and take it on the rise before it gets too high. <laughs> So 
So the ball's going to bounce, it's going to bounce and go through my contact zone twice, on the way up and then on the falling ball. So that's exactly what we've covered in method one. Now this is a more advanced method. You're stepping in, so you're taking time away from yourself, but you're also taking time away from your opponent. Now in order for you to execute this on the rise tactic well, you'll have to stay low, so lower your center of gravity. You'll have to be quick at getting to that ball, because if you move to that ball late, the ball will end up again above your shoulder out of that strike zone. So I want to stay low, I want to shorten my swing slightly because now I have less time, so I'm taking time away from myself so that shorter swing will help me to make contact out in front on both my forehand or my back and side. Now a lot of players, they think that when they take the ball on the rise, they have to hit the ball flatter and harder, which is not true. You can still hit with good levels of topspin, but by taking the ball early, you're already taking time away from your opponent. Now you can also go cross court with these shots. That will be the higher percentage play. If you do go down the line, make sure you've hit a really good shot and you've pushed the player way off the court. Because if you hit a down the line shot that isn't very good, the player can exploit the space on the other side. Now on some surfaces like clay, it will be very hard for you to take the ball on the rise because of the bad bounces. If you still want to try this, just make sure you stay light on your feet, on the balls of the feet, ready to adjust for any bad bounces. Now remember, if you choose this option and you step in to no man's land and you take that ball on the rise, don't stay there. You either have to transition into the net after your shot, or you have to move back behind the baseline so that you don't get caught out with those deep shots on the next one. Now in a perfect world, we'll hit our shot between the hip and the shoulder level, but sometimes that ball still goes up, especially on slightly bouncier courts like clay. So if you've been caught out where the ball has risen high, you have to be able to deal with it. And there are two ways that we can do that, either with a flat shot or a slice shot. The slice is a great way of dealing with that high ball because you don't have to get above the ball to close it off in order to hit the shot, and it stays low and makes it difficult for the opponent to attack. Now when it gets high on that backhand, to hit an effective slice, make sure that you've got your elbow up, you've got your left hand holding the racket, so you're starting nice and high, so you can go down on the ball and through the shot and into the court. What you don't want to do is to A, lean back on the ball by letting the ball come down onto your racket because most likely you're going to hit a floating slice which the opponent can attack. But also, you don't want to cut down and chop on the ball because yes, the ball will have a lot of slice, but you won't have enough depth or the ball will not get carried onto the other side of the court. Now this can happen a lot, for example, on a second serve return. If you've been caught out by a high kick, you'll need to slice that ball, and it's something that someone like Roger Federer does great. He slices that ball cross court. It's a great way to go cross court chip, and then recover back, which now puts you in a good position. So make sure that your body weight is going forward through contact. We don't want to lean back. We're putting our shoulder down into the court. We're transferring our body weight from our back foot to our front foot, and we're carrying on through the shot. Remember, you're not cutting down. You're going down, but through. Sometimes when the ball is a little bit shorter and it's loopier, we can also play a drop shot. So some players end up playing drop shots from these kind of shots because they're moving forward and they're able to control the ball with the slice. But again, that's more of an advanced move. Make sure that you've mastered the slice first. What you're aiming for is a low trajectory going low over the net so that the ball can bite on the other side and stay low and difficult for the opponent to attack. After the shot, we can either transition forward and use it as an approach shot, or we recover back behind the baseline, ready for our next shot. Now, when you're moving forward, the transition shot, a great way to hit it would be to go down a line because you then close off the angles when you're coming forward. And when you go cross court, make sure that you recover back slightly to the left of the line and be ready to chase the next shot. Now another option on these higher bouncing balls is to allow the ball to rise to around shoulder level and then hit a much flatter, more aggressive shot. This is once again a more advanced option, but if you are someone who wants to start being more aggressive, then start working on this tactic right away. this method you have to make sure that you get the ball around shoulder level if you let it go too high once again it will become more of a defensive shot 
So on the forehand side, I can use the open or the semi-open stance, but then drive onto my left leg. So we'll go from this loaded position onto my left leg. This will ensure that my body weight goes into that ball. Now with the backhand, the two-handed or the one-handed backhand, it's an easier option to step in with that neutral or that semi-closed stance because now you can transition your body weight through that contact point. Now on that backhand side, you can still use a jump step as you're hitting. So I can go neutral stance and then have a hop step right to right if you're a right-handed player. Some players that use this will be Safin, Nalbanian, Marcelo Rios, and for the one-handers, we still have some players who like to drive into that single-handed backhand. Now, in order to generate more power on these high balls, it's really important that we uncoil through that contact point. So as I'm going to that shot, I'm making sure that I turn the shoulders on both sides, but instead of just hitting and staying front on, I actually want my back shoulder to come all the way around until it's facing the net. That will ensure that I get that massive coil and uncoil twist all the way through the contact point. Now remember, with this option, because you are hitting the ball quite high, you're hitting it around shoulder level, you don't need a massive lift on that ball. You don't need to produce that massive net margin. You can hit the ball much flatter, but it's important that you don't go for the lines because then it'll become too risky. So we're going for large targets, cross score or down the line. Make sure you give yourself a good amount of margin on either side, so the length or the depth, so you don't hit the ball long or wide. Now the most aggressive and attacking option that we have is hitting a drive volley. Now because the moon ball, that spinny shot, takes time to reach the baseline, it's a little bit slower, it flies through there a little bit slower, therefore if you're quick enough to recognize that it's going to be a deep moon ball, even if it's got spin on it, it still will take time to reach the baseline. If you can get inside the court, get your body moving forward and take the ball out of the air, you'll actually not only rush your opponent, but you can actually open up a lot more angle on the court. And that's why a lot of the players, especially the WTA players, they get inside Inside the court because they hit the ball quite flat they're unlikely to find angle from behind the court but once they get forward and they hit that drive volley all of a sudden you can open up the angles and you can become even more aggressive and the technique is very similar for the flat shot where you're loading your legs and you're jumping into the shot in order to hit it now often when we're looking for that drive volley and we got into the court, the ball can be a little bit too high to hit that drive volley. So even a smash becomes an option. If you can, can get underneath that ball and smash that ball down, it's an even more aggressive option. But again, it's a little bit risky. You need to make sure that you get underneath that ball and make sure that you can get your arm up and a nice contact above your body. So here's the drill. Now we're going to work on moving back for that moon ball and creating space. This drill is called the V drill, where you hit the shot, you come back forward, and then you move back again. So we'll have a cone in the middle of the court, which I have to go around, and this is to recreate you, for example, landing after a serve, where you end up inside the court, and then you get forced back by a deep return, where you have to, A, have the right footwork pattern to get back for that shot, but also hit the shot properly, so have the right footwork during contact. Here I'm aiming for high deep balls to recreate the shot that I would be trying to hit and after the shot I'm going to move forward again and this is obviously if you've hit a deep ball you're then looking for that shorter one. You never want to be surprised by the shorter one after your good shot. So it's back, forward, then back, then forward and it's that V pattern that we're going to recreate. Now you've worked on moving back and creating space, the next drill is all about taking the ball on the rise and staying inside the baseline. So Alex is going to be feeding me quite deep balls with a lot of spin and I'm not allowed to step in the green. So I'm going to have a few cones behind me which almost block me from going back. Here the focus is on staying low, so low center of gravity, shortening my swings on both sides so that I can find that contact point and making sure that I still have some margin on those shots. So I'm not trying to blast the shot as hard as possible. I can still control that shot, but I'm taking it on the rise.
Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. Now, if you have, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you share the video with anyone that you think will benefit from learning from this. And also leave a comment under the video and let us know what you struggle with most in your game. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well and turn on the notification bell. Signing off, Simon and Alex. See you soon, guys. So now it's time for the drill. First, let's work on our recovery and... Now it's time for the drill. First, we'll work on the moving back for those deep balls. So this is... So now it's time for the drill. This drill is called the V drill. V drill, 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 drill. So now it's time for the drill. Here we're going to work on getting back for those deep balls. And then recovery after the shot. Back for those deep balls. Breathing space. Yes. So now it's time for the drill. 